All right. I am going to turn this. I'm going to ask Kate, uh, Kate to come back. I'm doing it by myself. Okay. I'm out here all alone. We're going to do the poll. We're going to do the poll, but we're also, you know, uh, CMAC. Um, we're talking about CMAC. I'm going to do that. Huh? She did it first thing this morning. She did it first thing this morning. So I'm going to, I'm going to just remind you. Um, CMAC is the um, Southeast Michigan Alliance for Addiction-Free Communities. Uh, and it is a coalition of healthcare, government, business, and nonprofit organizations. And we, and, and um, that's right, Kate did go through each of the areas that we're focusing on, and then how do we then create the, the data, the information, and the advocacy, and the will to sort of make a change. So one of the things that our, uh, our um, stigma committee wanted to do was to look at some of the challenges that, challenges that we're facing. And you heard this in several of the presentations. And so we have a poll that's coming up. And to see this poll, you have to click on the poll tab. Everybody see the poll? I want, we have 200 people, uh, you know, sort of viewing this. So we need 200 people to click on that poll tab above your chat box uh, on the right of your screens, right? I got that right, they're going to the right place. We want you to click on that poll box and then we're, I'm gonna ask these questions and after each question is presented, um, the corresponding poll question will pop up and we want you to use this poll to select your answer and to submit your response. All right, let's go for the first question. My first question is when you, um, is there the PowerPoint up? Can we see the slide? All right, which image represents an image of a drug dealer responsible for $5.5 million of illegal opioids fentanyl in Detroit? So we're gonna see the image or not? There it is, all right? And you're gonna click on A or B. Again, which image represents an image of the drug dealer responsible for $5.5 million of illegal opioids fentanyl in Detroit? Click on A or B. And as those answers roll in, <laughs> is that it? How many votes do we have? I only have 67 votes. There you go. All right, we're going to give you a few more seconds to respond. And the answers are coming in. They're rolling in. What'd you say? <laughs> All right, we're gonna end this poll. And from my poll results, it's looked like 99% of you chose A, and only 1% chose B. Now, one of the things that we are doing is that, one, this was an article in, um, in the press. This was an article um, that had, was on uh, several of our uh, social media. And you're right, A, he was responsible for $5.5 million of illegal opioids fentanyl in Detroit. And I think because you were listening and you are understanding some of the challenges that we have been facing with some of our doctors uh, looking at greed and not upholding their oath of doing no harm. However, B is not far behind. They were only responsible for $4.4 million of opioids and fentanyl in Detroit. All right. Our next question, which picture represents the typical image of drug users, A, B, or C? All right, click on that poll. All 
All right, don't forget to click on the poll at the upper right-hand corner of your uh, screen. There you go. I want everybody to respond. All right, keep those poll votes rolling in, A, B, or C. Which picture reflects the typical image of drug users? All right, I'm going to close the poll. We have the majority of folks answering. 33% uh, of you said A, 24% of you said B, and 43% of you said C. And so every single one of these um, pictures were pictures that we pulled out of the press, and they do represent families that have been impacted by drug use, and each one of them represent a family member who have died. Uh, a, uh, the, the, the young man next to, I guess in the middle, was one of the ones who had died. Uh, in B, I think both have passed away. And in C, uh, one of the brothers, one of the brothers had also passed away. But we're going to get back to this when we begin to talk about, you know, why we put this up for you. But uh, again, um, th the typical drug user is not the typical picture that we have usually seen in the press. All right, our third question. Which picture best represent how substance use disorder is commonly portrayed? A, as a crime scene, B, as someone talking about peer recovery, and C, as folks sitting on the corner snorting away. All right, click on the poll and answer A, B, or C to the question of which picture best represents how substance use disorder is commonly portrayed. I'm going to ask you when this is done to go back to the first poll picture. Votes are flying in. All right, we're going to close the poll in a second or two. All right, let's close the poll. Now, one of the things that we're, you're seeing for A, 14%, for B, 3%, and for C, 99, what was it, 83% of the votes. One of the things that we really want to stress, and one of the things that, that the, the stigma committee had talked about, is that these are images that have been used in the media articles and reports to discuss opioid use, substance use disorders, and overdose. If you could go back to the very first um, picture slide. In the media, typically what we see, we don't see A, we see B. We see the big rollers, we see the heavy chains, we see the minorities. And so one of the things that we as, as um, providers and as those folks that are on the ground and on the streets, we need to then begin to look at how do we then to begin to address this? How do we then begin to, um, you know, to, to say, wait a minute, this isn't just an issue for minorities or for um, other folks in our community. This is an issue that we have to really sort 
sort of take a, 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 a look at and then and hold people accountable, hold big pharma accountable, hold the doctors who are supposed to get us well and do no harm, hold them accountable to what they and others are doing in the community. That doesn't take B off the hook. We're going to hold them responsible too, but we also have to know that image out there is also relevant to the drug use and the increase in drug use in our community. If we go to the next picture, which picture reflects the typical image of drug users? In the media, the typical image is B. The typical image is the police car. The typical image are the minorities that are using drugs who have passed away from drugs. But unfortunately, this is an equal opportunity drug that is impacting all of us. We, we want to make sure that people are aware that when we put blinders on and say it can't happen to me, these pictures represent both A, both B, and both C, that it can happen to any of us, and it definitely can impact our children. That was one of the major presentations that we have. If we go back to our next one. The typical picture that we see in the media when we talk about substance use disorder, the common picture is the drug scene. The common picture is the crime scene. The common picture are the police, you know, the police uh, red and green and blue lights that are flashing out there. The common picture is C, is somebody sitting on a corner snorting and, and uh, you know, shooting up because that's what we want to see. But what we do want to see is we want to see that peer recovery coach. We want to see them talking and addressing. We want to make sure that the images of help and resources and opportunities are also as equally outlined in the media and outlined among our peers as possible, then we know that there's a chance. We talked, you know, we, we heard from Mr. Kenyatta who says, I've gone into the barbershops, I've gone into the communities to say we need to change the face of what it is that we're looking at and to make sure that we offer that opportunity for help. The visuals and the language that are used to portray substance use disorder, addiction, and overdose influence the stigma surrounding these topics and play a role in a person's path to recovery. Uh, our CMAX stigma subcommittee is working to create resources, tools, and educational guides that demonstrate the positive ways to present and discuss substance use disorder and recovery. We heard it from just about every single one of our presenters. We are the ones that are now on the ground that can make a difference, that can address stigma, and can choose to make a difference in the lives of our patients, our family members, and our friends. So we hope to change the perceptions of SUD and of people with a substance use disorder. We want to help people recognize that this disease can happen to anyone and make assessing treatment, recovery, easier for everyone. And to make sure that we are working equally as hard for prevention, to prevent these kinds of things from happening, to make sure that, I think Daniel said very clearly, we need to go into our eighth and sixth graders. We need to make sure that everyone in our community is engaged and involved. So with that, thank you for participating in our polls. I hope that woke you all up. We are winding down now. Um,